All right, guys, we got the first component for the parts it's gonna take to let this engine breathe a little better, so let's get into it. What's up, guys? My name is Andy, and on this video, we're gonna replace the intake manifold on my 66 Fastback. This is the stock manifold that came on this 289. It's a two-barrel setup with the, with the factory carb, the Autolite 2100, I believe is the, the name for that. It works but I want this engine to breathe a little bit better, so we're gonna start upgrading these parts and we're gonna start with the intake manifold. Uh, and then we're also gonna do, uh, in another video, we're gonna do the carburetor and we'll do the headers. We've got a couple videos to, to, to go through this series of getting this engine to breathe a little better, but for this one, we're gonna focus on the intake manifold, how to take it out of here and how to put the new one and everything that's gonna happen during all those steps, you know, dealing with the distributor, um, how we're gonna clean everything in here so we can put the new parts in. We'll go through all that. So let's go over to the bench. Let's take a look at the parts that we have and see what we're gonna be putting in the car. All right, what do we got here is the Edelbrock Performer Intake, the uh, 2121. And let's get this thing. What I've got in here is, I've, I've stuck all the parts in here that we're gonna need for this setup. Got new gaskets, I even got some new bolts. Uh, I got a couple of thermostat housing gaskets in case I mess it up. We got a new thermostat. Uh, we've got a new uh, temperature setting unit because I can believe the one that's in there uh, is no good. Here's some extra pieces that come with the uh, the manifold. Paperwork, here's some bolts for the thermostat, thermostat housing and then a brand new thermostat housing. Last thing here, these are, I had to buy these also. These are the, the studs for the carburetor. The nice thing about this little kit that they send with you is that you've got the plugs for the various parts that you need to put in here. Um, I believe we're gonna plug this one or one of those two because I think we need the vacuum off of here for the transmission. This is for the heater and actually right now my heater is not hooked up. There's just a bypass loop that's going from here down to the water pump. So I'm gonna maintain that. And then this is where the temperature sending unit goes. This one, I think these are just places for you to put studs and screws and stuff like that for your spring system for the carburetor. Let's get this out of the way. Just to go over this again, what I've got here is these, um, is it called Molly or, or Mayo? Or I don't know how you pronounce that, but there's lots of different brands of gaskets out there. All right, so there's the part number. The part number for the intake or for the thermostat housing gasket, that's Felpro, ARP, um, head, uh, the intake manifold bolts, the ARP thermostat housing bolts, there's that part number. Uh, I don't know what that part number, but I just, it is just generic studs that you can get anywhere. The temperature sending unit part number, uh, the uh, thermostat, and then this one, I don't have a part number for this. This is just a generic uh, thermostat housing. So from here, I think the next step is to go ahead and we'll start disassembling everything on the car and uh, get ready to put this in place. All right, so the first step is we obviously got to get the, the old carburetor, air filter, all that stuff out of the way. But I'm going to be covering a lot of that in another video. So we're going to just skip from here straight to the part where the carb is out of the way and we can start working on the intake manifold. All right, now that that carburetor is out of the way, we need to do the last couple steps before we can remove the manifold. First thing we're going to want to do is come down here, turn this valve on the radiator to drain all the coolant out so then we can disconnect all the hoses that are attached to the manifold. And then we want to get the distributor out of the way. While you can do the manifold with the distributor in place, it really, it's a pain in the butt, so let's just not mess with that. And the easiest way th to do that is we went ahead and, and turned the crank until it was on 12 degrees. So we know that the, the cylinder number one is in the firing position. And you go ahead and you just mark on the, the housing here, on the distributor housing, where this is pointing so that when we put it all back together, we can get this point in the right spot. We know that everything's lined up correctly. And then uh, we'll just go ahead and pull the rest of the spark plug wires out of the way. And that way we can, once that all is done, we can get to the bolts that are holding the manifold in place and then we can get it out of the way.
All right, now that we got all those out, uh, real quick, I had nuts on, I had two studs in here, and I don't know if that's common on these, or if maybe somebody was replacing the bolts and they put studs in here, so when you lift this up, I'm gonna have to lift it straight up. I can't kind of move things around, and that's where it makes it uh, an advantage of removing the distributor, because this has to come straight up, it would have hit that distributor, this part would have, so. Now we wanna pop this thing free, and if you have to use a screwdriver to kind of get in there and pop things up, but it shouldn't take very much, there we go. Yeah, that didn't take very much at all. I don't know how well this was secured into the car, but that didn't take much. So we should be able to just lift this up out of the car. This is kind of heavy because this is the cast iron one. Now, see, I've got other wires and stuff in the way here, so you guys might have the same problem. Try your best to get those out of the way. Hopefully you won't do what I did and spill it on your paint as you go to put it on the floor. But here it is, uh, I'm gonna clean it up real quick. All right, so we're looking pretty good in here. You can see probably coolant down here on the bottom and coolant over there, that's okay. It, it dripped off from the connections of the manifold, that's all right. What we need to do next is we need to get these gaskets out of here and we might have to scrape them off the head. So we also gotta clean up this part right here and the same thing on the back edge. And we're gonna put a uh, gasket sealer stuff on here and on here. Um, it's a good thing we, we covered this up. We don't want any water or anything going down inside the distributor hole. We'll just go ahead and get everything just cleaned up here and get it prepared for the new manifold that's gonna go on. So we need to pull a few pieces off of the old manifold before we start with the new one. We need this whole little vacuum manifold thing here. Um, I don't know what these were going to, but we only need just the one line because this goes to the, because I have the automatic transmission. So we need to feed that transmission with that vacuum line. And then up here, we need the uh, this little recirculation elbow for the water pump that goes into the manifold here. This is the old thermostat. We're gonna leave that in there because I got a new one for the new uh, manifold. And that's all we need to bring. Um, you could bring these studs over to the new uh, manifold, but I got a new set, so we don't need those. Uh, so let's get started on the uh, on putting together the new manifold. So when you get a new one of these manifolds, you get a little bag full of goodies, for little plugs and screws and stuff that you're gonna need throughout this. And I think all we're gonna need for this is just one of these plugs that we'll put, you know, on here or here. Uh, and then the other one, we'll put that vacuum set up on here. And in the front, we're gonna put the thermostat here and then that recirculation elbow for the water pump will go right here. The rest of these, like these holes here and here, this is for, these are threaded for you to put attachments in there. And then of course the, the holes along the outside is for bolting it down. Um, but so we wanna go ahead and get this threaded in. Uh, we'll get that done. We'll get the thermostat put in place and uh, we can go ahead and throw that guy in there. And then uh, we'll get that in there and then we can move over to putting the studs in.
So now that we have all the stuff in place, I went ahead and took a wire wheel to, to this piece here because it was all painted blue and I took a wire wheel to that and just tried to clean it up a little bit. Um, I don't really like this setup back here. I tried to thread this in by itself and this the thread pitch just isn't the same as that so I had to use this little adapter piece. I'm gonna have to figure out something else because this thing's just kind of ugly and I mean it's in the back of the motor but I only need this for the, for the transmission and if I ever get to doing a T5 swap and I won't need this at all. So um, for now, I guess it's fine. Got the studs in, thermostat, the plug, this, everything's ready to go. Now we can put the uh, the thermostat housing on the front. When assembling the thermostat housing, we wanna make sure that this pointy end is pointing towards the radiator, or in this case, it would, it would sit this way. And we put it in here like so, but if you do that, and then you put the gasket on, you could have a problem where this thing slides down. A little bit and then when you go to cinch this up it's going to pinch it and you can it won't seal so the super secret way of doing that is to pr spray some you know 3m adhesive or some sort of automotive adhesive on the back side of this and then we'll stick this on here we'll put this in its place we'll stick this on there and then it will stick and then we'll apply some of this ultra black gasket maker just a little bit along here on the surface and then we can bolt it in place we're going to use some new ARP studs. You can use the old ones. There's nothing wrong with the old ones. I just have new parts here So I was just going to use some new fasteners and then the last part is the the this little hole That I have drilled in there. That's so that the air can get out when you're setting this up um, When you go to assemble this whole system, you're going to have air in there and without that hole There's no way for the air that's inside here to get through and it'll cause problems when you're trying to Get the motor warmed up and get all the air out. So by drilling that hole in there, that'll let the air out All right, now everything's buttoned up. We're ready to go ahead and put this in the car. Next step is to go ahead and put the gaskets in place. And uh, this one, I'm just happened to use um, these just standard gaskets. There's nothing fancy about them. And what you'll find is that there's a little tab from the head gaskets that allow these to, you know, this section right here for it to sit on the, uh, the as it leans against the heads, it can kind of sit on that little tab and just holds it right in place right where it needs to be, which is fantastic, so these things won't slip around. And then the next part is we wanna put some RTV or some black, you know, that black gasket maker along these edges. I don't wanna use those cork gaskets. So we're gonna put that gasket maker right along these edges. They say you want about a quarter inch thick uh, layer of that black gasket stuff in there before you put the manifold in place. I'm going to use some studs that I made. Just These are just 5 16 by 18 bolts. They're 3 inches long. I just cut the head off and put a little slot in there for a screwdriver. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put them in the four corners and that'll give me kind of a, a guide pin, if you will, for the manifold. So when I put it on, it goes straight down onto the gaskets the uh, manifold gaskets and onto the RTV sealant on there so that it creates a good seal and goes straight down. We could use the fasteners that were holding the stock manifold down, but I went ahead and just got some new ones for this since we're using new parts. All right, we just set this in place again. Just remember we have those guide pins. We want to go ahead and use those and just go ahead and set it down as straight as you can. Future Andy here. Guys, I screwed up. I forgot to put that ultra black gasket sealant on the ends of the of the gasket here where it goes over the water ports on the on the heads and uh, <laughs> I found out the hard way I started having coolant leak everywhere so guys don't make that mistake make sure you put that uh, that sealant stuff on here we're gonna go ahead and do that I've got a new gasket set I went ahead and got a Felpro set here's the part number and uh, the reason why I got this set is partly because it's got this little ridge around the ports which helps kind of seal them off and then um, that way that I know that the, the intake ports will help you seal, but I'm also still going to put that black sealant on these, on these ports here for the water jacket. 
All right, guys, we already got the one put on here. Make sure that you cut both sides of this with that black sealant stuff on both ends. Get both sides. Same thing on that one. And then I'm putting this letter, this design facing down. It doesn't say either way, but I'm keeping it the same on both sides. Also, don't forget to put that bead on there with you. <laughs> if you get in a hurry like I did and forget to put the sealant on here, you get to redo all this stuff. So hopefully you guys won't have that problem. All right, now everything's in place. Everything's sealed. Everything's happy. Now we can go ahead and uh, put the manifold back on and get back to the rest of the video. Just like that. And you'll see that the, the RTV, the, the black gasket maker is oozing out a little bit, which is what we want. Uh, make sure you, when you put it on there, you put it on a little extra thick so you can get a little bit to ooze out. That's okay. And uh, everything's seated in place. Now we can go ahead and put the fasteners in. And I just snug those down just enough to hold this in place. Now I can go ahead and pull the four studs out of the corner and then we'll put those four bolts in. So with this manifold, Edelbrock supplied a torquing instructions and it's kind of hard to see on here, but uh, the, the number of, you know, we'll do this one, then that one, then that one. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow the pattern and so we distribute the, the load on this evenly. We'll torque it down to 10 pounds and then we'll come around and torque it to 20 pounds on all of those. All right, guys, we're gonna stop right there. Uh, normally, we would continue and con put the rest of the car back together, but I've got some other videos I'm working on. The, the next video is uh, finishing up the carburetor. We're putting a new carb on there, so you're gonna wanna check that out. And then I've, I'm also gonna do the timing cover and the, and the water pump and stuff like that. So normally, we would, I would show you how to finish buttoning up, this, you know, put the hoses back on there and everything in place, but we've got a little more work to do. So for this, we're gonna stop right here. Um, again, follow the torque specs that, uh, that your manufacturer recommends, uh, and thankfully with that new manifold that gave me the instructions, I was able to put that together. Uh, there's new fasteners, everything looks good, everything's happy, everything's in place. Um, and from here, it's just going to make it easier when I put the rest of the parts on. So guys, that takes care of a manifold in your 289. Uh, if, you, <laughs> if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up, I'd appreciate it. And if you subscribe, I also appreciate it because it has my channel out, and we'll see you in the next one.